People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. The sensitivity, the docs are going to tell you that reducing plaque is not that important. Preventing soft plaque is the goal. I think sometimes they're confused, right? Because if they are on the plumbing assumption that the bigger the plaque, the worse the risk, I agree with that. But if you have a, a bigger plaque that is calcified, I want to be too worried about it. And I would be more worried about soft plaque even if that is small. I think desitivity is referring to a practical point that I make. Because by far and away, you know, our most popular video is describing my own plaque shrunk. And we get people all the time saying, well, I want to shrink my plaque. Well, that's not a very practical goal. Very, very few people do that. In fact, I've only seen three people where you actually saw evidence of decrease on it. And the reality to your point, Desitivity, is probably not that I actually pulled small dense LDL out of the plaque that was in my artery wall and got rid of it. It's probably that I continued to pull inflammation out of that plaque. But we've got courses which actually show you what's going on with plaque. And soft plaque has immune cells. The immune cells release cytokines and enzymes. And most of all, that creates swelling. And the swelling is from those two things and from fluid. As you continue to stabilize your plaque, you can shrink that. So it's not so much a practical goal to say, I'm going to shrink all mine and I'm going to sh demonstrate shrinkage in imaging. But it is very practical to say, I'm going to make that plaque stable. Bob Campo visited Hopkins site and they're recommending grains in their diet. Maybe Hopkins can learn, learn and relearn proper nutrition from Dr. Brewer. Don't you wish, you know, it makes such a point. And it's like, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times, Mayo Clinic, different people at Hopkins. Unfortunately, they will often relegate or delegate some of this public information to people that are just reading the internet and not people that have treated patients, not people that are that deep into understanding of the prevalence of prediabetes and the impact. You know, if you're pre-diabetic, carbs are a poison. You know, you can eat some, but as you know from prevention and, and uh, occupational medicine, it's more the dosage that creates the poison than anything else. And for most of the world, it isn't so much sugar that is creating the majority of the dosage of carbs in a standard diet. It's grain products. It's, well, whole grains are part of a healthy diet. Look at whole wheat bread, the glycemic value for whole wheat bread versus white bread, and compare that to just pure mainline, pure white and deadly sugar. It's what, like 75, 65, and 60 to 50. And guess which is which? The lowest of those three in terms of impacting your blood sugar is sugar itself. The other two, including whole wheat bread, are way above sugar. Why don't U.S. medical school mandate nutrition model as part of their standard required curriculum? I think they have it, right? I, I can tell you, in Mexico, I did have a six-month module of nutrition. It was taught by a nutritionist. Unfortunately, I got taught a lot of the food pyramid stuff. A lot of the saturated fats are bad for you. Some biochemical explanations, not the best ones, I gotta say. I think the teacher was well-intended and she has been taught. But I also saw low levels of interest on the medical community, at least on my experience, on that specific topic. You know, a huge portion of the medical manpower available in all countries today is my generation, the boomer generation. And they're retiring out, but I can tell you, obviously I'm not. This is my retirement, but because of my purpose, my life purpose. We did not have nutrition in my day. Now, I've been involved in medical education as recently as, what, five years ago. I was still on the physician training committees at the University of Kentucky. And even at that time, they still did not have significant nutrition training modules. Why? Because they're still too busy putting them through fires of trials, staying up too late, and badges of honor. Instead of teaching things like nutrition that could have helped them and their their patients a lot more.